Hey guys and welcome back to another Mission 4 tutorial. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create a character select screen in which before you start the game you can choose which character you want the player to play as. So I'm not going to set up the main menu in this episode, I've done that in a previous episode which I'll leave a link to in the description down below and on screen now. However I am going to be setting up the widget which will add on the main menu so everything you'll need is in this video except creating the main menu itself. But let me hit play and show you what it's going to look like. So we can get in and hit play. This is our very basic main menu which I have. The actual video where I made one is a lot better than this. If I hit play, we're going to have to pick which character we want. So I've got my SWAT character and my mannequin character. And you can customise the buttons to look very different as well. So at the moment I've just got a very low resolution image on there which just goes to white when you hover over it. Again, very easy to customise. This is just something which I quickly set up to show you what it looks like. If we select our SWAT character, we're going to load into the menu. And actually I think I put the image on the wrong one. If we then hit play and go into the mannequin, that plays that. So yeah, let me just quickly change those around. So yeah, sorry about that. I've now switched them around. If I select the mannequin, we're going to play as the mannequin. And if I then select the SWAT, we're going to play as the SWAT. So the only reason that happened is just I had the pictures on the button the wrong way around. Uh, so that's my bad again. Sorry about that. However, this does work perfectly. So we can choose whichever character we want to play as. And it will load that one in when we load the game. And obviously you can have different abilities on different characters or anything along those lines. But in this, we get to choose and select which character we want to play as. So without further ado, let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done it. So what we want to do first is we want to open up our main menu level and then also our main menu widget. So for me, that's in content, main menu, my main menu widget here. And as you can see, I'm already in the main menu map as well. So once we're in here, again, this is just my basic main menu which I've set up. But what we want to do is get the button you want to select the character. So I'm going to use character select off of the play button but you can have your own separate button for selecting a character if you'd like. But for me, I'm going to go on play. So select the button and then get the on clicked event on the bottom right here. Off of on clicked, what I want to do is simply remove from parent, like so. So I'm taking off this widget from the screen. Then we're going to come out of that and get a create widget. And this is where we're going to have our character select menu once we've made it. Out of this, we're going to add to viewport. And so what this is going to do is just take the main menu off the screen and add the character select on the screen instead. So if we minimize this, right click, go to user interface, create a widget blueprint. I'm going to name this one character select. We can open that up straight away. Go back to our main menu and in this select class in our create widget, we can just put our character select there, compile and save, and that should be the main menu done. Because all we want to do is just open up our character select when we press the play button. So we can close the main menu there and now we can create our character select. So in here, what I'm going to do is just very simply give it a simple look. So I'm going to add a border in here, setting the size to be 1920 by 1080. Anchoring it to the full screen, I'm just going to give it a basic blue color, just to give it a nice little color like so. Then what I'm going to do is add some text on there as well. And this is just going to simply say, choose your character or character select or anything like that. So the player knows what it is. So I'm going to choose your character there, size to content, and I'll set the size to be about 60. I think that's good and I'll anchor it to the top middle like so, so it stays there like that. So I think that's going to be good. I might just give it a quick outline as well, however I'm not going to bother too much making this look good. So outline size of about 5. I think that looks alright. What we want to do next is we want to add in some buttons. So I'm going to get a button up here and drag it into the canvas panel. I'm going to set the size of this to be 480 by 852. So we get this nice rectangle shape here which is perfect for our character. I'm just going to place it over on the left like so, anchoring it there as well, so we can just drag the anchor into the middle of that. I'm going to rename this button to be SWAT character, as I want my SWAT character to be here, but you can obviously choose whichever character you want for this button to be. And of course you can have as many different buttons as you like for as many different characters as you like as well, and you can visually set this up and design it to be however you like as well. What I'm going to do next is get another button, so I'll just duplicate that, so onto the canvas panel there moving it over to the right a bit more and anchoring it here as well. I'm not going to bother too much about making this look all pretty and look nice, but I think for the moment that's going to look good for me. And because I'm using buttons, we can just press this instead, we don't have to get an image and then mess up with that, we can just straight up use a button and put an image on there. So the image, let's set up now. So of course you can use whatever you like, so you can just get a static image if you'd want, which would be good as well, however you might want to have a character render in there instead. So let me show you how to set up a character render, but it's just a static image would be as simple as just putting it in there. For character render, we're going to minimize this, 
and you want to make sure that you have your characters placed in the level. So as this is an empty level, I've just placed down a cube here so they don't fall, placed the characters on there like this by simply just dragging and dropping them in, and then I've also added some point lights just to light them up as well. Now this still isn't going to look great, however it works perfectly for what we want. So once you've got that scene set up there, we want to add a scene capture 2D in the level like so, so that we can then capture the scene, which makes sense. And I'm just going to rotate this to face the character which I want. Now we won't need to worry about putting it in the correct positioning too much at the moment. We'll just get it to where we think would be good. So I think there. In the bottom right, we have scene capture and texture target. I'm going to select none and we should have create render target. However, I've accidentally got the scene capture cube. I don't want the scene capture cube, I want scene capture 2D. So that's my bad, I got the wrong one. But now we've got scene capture 2D, we can put that in there like so. I just accidentally dragged in the wrong one. So make sure you don't make that mistake as well because they're very close together. So we can select none next to texture target and create a render target there. I'm going to put it in just the basic content there and I'm going to name it SWAT RT for render target. And then that's that part done. What I'm now going to do is hold down Alt, drag this camera out to duplicate it over here, and do the same thing. So select SWAT RT, create a new render target, naming this one Mannequin RT, or whatever you have for that character. So now we have the textures, we want to turn these into materials. So we go to the folder where they are, which for me is there, and we select both of these and create material. So now we have two different materials like this, I'm going to open both of those up straight away as well. What we want to do here is just make it so we can use them in a widget. So to do that, I'm going to change material domain from surface to user interface, connecting the RGB into final color and hitting apply. Doing that for both of these, so that way we can use them in our widget on top of our buttons like we want. Like so, apply and close that. And now if we select our button, we should be able to get this working. So this is my SWAT character button here. What I'm going to do is get the image, search for SWAT RT mat there. And once this loads, that should work. I'll do the same with my other button. I'll rename this button to be mannequin character and having the image as our mannequin render target material there. So you see that one's already loaded and now they've both loaded like so. At the very start, they look very pixelated and very, very low quality. Now that will kind of stay because we're using the scene capture 2D in this empty level, which is why it'd be better to just get an actual image or an actual video if you want like that. However, again, I'm showing you how to do this in case you want it. So what we can do is with the image still selected, we can change the image size to be the same size as our button, which is 480 by 582. Doing that for both of these like so, and you can see it already looks better. 480 by 582 looks way better like so, and once we compile, they look different like that. But now they're further away. So to do this, we can just minimize this like so, so we can still see it, and then just move these cameras in the level. And then you'll see that that texture is moving there as well. So now we can get a live feed of what the camera is looking like, so we can customize this to get it perfect for how we want it to be. So again, I'm not going to spend too much time with the looks of it, but I think maybe something along those lines would be good. I'll do the same for the mannequin as well. So again, I think something like that will do me just fine. And I'm going to maximize that again, and now we have our very simple character select here. Not perfect, you want to do something different, but I'm showing you that method anyway. So once we've done that, we've now got the basic visual part of it set up. Now let's do some more coding. So if we go to the event graph on the top right here, delete these three events, I'm going to select my SWAT character button and get an on clicked event. So we want to select our SWAT character and we'll also get one for the mannequin as well to get on clicked. Now what we want to do is we want to use something called a game instance to be able to set which character we want to use. And that's because variables in the game instance don't get reset when we switch levels. They stay in persistent levels until you exit the game. So we need to create a game instance. So we're going to minimize this, go back to our blueprints folder here, and I'm going to right click, go to blueprint class, and I'm going to search, so open the all classes here, and search for a game instance, selecting that, and I'm going to name it my game instance. You can name it whatever you like, just don't name it game instance, because that will then confuse you in a minute. Because what we want to do now is go to edit, project settings, once it loads we'll go to maps and modes and then we want to put in our game instance there. So for you it will just be game instance by default, so we want to change that from game instance to my game instance or whatever it is that you've named it. And so now we're using the game instance that we have just made so we can store this variable between levels which is perfect for a character select. So we can close that 
and then open up our game instance that we've just made. All we want to do in here is just hit the plus variable and I'm going to name this one character and I'm going to change the variable type from a boolean to a pawn class reference there. So get pawn, hover over it and get the purple class reference, compiling it and that's all we need to do because again we're just using this to store a variable which is which character we want to play as. So we can compile, save and close the game instance. Now what we want to do, back in our character select, off of our buttons, what we want to do is come out of this, so the swap character, I'm going to get actor of class, like so, the actor class being my swat character here. And again, make sure that you do have these in a the level. So if you don't have them in a the level already because you weren't doing this method, make sure you do have them now as we will need that to get a reference to them. So again, just put down a cube here and then put them on top like so. You won't be able to see them. It's just there for reference. And then, so we got that. And out the return value, we want to use that as the character we want to play as. So out of the execution, we're going to cast to the game instance we just made so we can store this variable. So mine is cast to my game instance. The object is obviously going to be get game instance like so. It's very simple. As my game instance, we want to set the character variable we've just made, connecting that to the execution. And the character you see is a pawn class reference. This return value is a pawn object reference. So very simply, we'll come at the return value of the get actor of class, and we're going to simply just get class with no space. So get class under utilities there, connecting the return value into the set character there. So now it's going to get the pawn class of our character and set that in our variable. So when we load into the game, it will play as this character. And then we want to do the same for the mannequin character. So we can just actually copy this code. So copy and paste that down here by control C, control V. And we can just change the get actor of class to be our mannequin character or whichever one that you have. So actually it's third person character for me. Object is again going to be get game instance. The get class will go into the set character there. Then we want to open our level. So we're going to come out of one of these and get open level function, connecting that into both of the set characters there. And the level name you want to make sure you spell absolutely correct, which for me is third person example map with no spaces and a capital letter for the start of each word. So this is the code which will let us select which character we want to play as. If we want to play as a SWAT character, it will get that character and set that to be the variable in our game instance so we can access that in different levels and they will do the same for the mannequin character but with that correct character. So we compile and save and we can close that as that is all we need to do in this blueprint. What we need to do now is like I say close it. We now need to go into the level that we want to open. So for me that's going to be content, third person BP, maps and the third person example map. Save all this and again just go to the map that you want to load into. In here we're going to open the level blueprint, so go to blueprints, open level blueprint and we're going to right click and get event begin play like so. And what we want to do is simply just when we begin the game we want to see which character the player wants to play as. Before we do that though we want to come out of event begin play and we want to set input mode game only. So that way when we start the game coming from the main menu we're going to be correctly we're going to have the correct input mode, meaning we can control the players and we can play the game normally. Player controller will be get player controller like so. Out of this, this is where we're going to access the game instance. So we're going to cast to my game instance like so. The object again being get game instance. And as my game instance, we want to get the variable we've made. So that's get character. And this, we want to then play as that character. So we're going to come out of the execution of the cast and spawn actor from class. The class is going to be that character class there and the spawn transform is where you want the player to spawn. So you can create your own spawn transform. So if we right click on it, promote to variable, naming this spawn transform, you can set this up to be what you want. I do have a video where I create a code for respawning the player, which uses this as well. But what I'm going to do is just choose a random location in the map, which I want. So if I just drag in an empty character, I want them to spawn there. So I can right click the location, copy, go back in here, compile this, open it up, right click the location, paste, and I'll leave everything else the same, like the rotation scale, and I'll just delete this. So now we're going to spawn in that location on the map. Everything else in here we can leave the same, and we'll come out the return value of the spawn actor and get a possess node, unticking context sensitive like that, and also spelling it correctly as well, possess and then tick context sensitive again. And then the target we want to have as get player controller. 
And now what this should do is when we begin the game, we should now play as the correct character. So this should be the code done. So we've got it so we can choose which character we want to play as, and when we play the game, it's going to spawn in the correct character and possess it so we can control it as well. So what I'm going to do is close this, go back into my main menu, and hit play to test it out. So I'm going to hit play, hit play in the main menu, and you can see we have the different characters here. I'm going to hover over them as white, customize that to get it perfect for you. If I select the SWAT character, we're going to spawn in as a SWAT character, and you saw it's where we wanted it to spawn as well, and we're now playing as a SWAT character. If I come out, play, hit on the mannequin, we're now playing as the mannequin character, and this works perfectly, so we can switch between and select different characters via the main menu before loading into the game. So I think that'll be it for this video, so we don't have anything we want to do. We've set it up so we can choose whichever character we want to play as from the main menu before hitting play, and then when we select the character, we'll load into the game with that correct character, and again, you can do this however you want for as many different characters as you want as well. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you find it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.